Hi, and welcome to this introductory tutorial on basic MakeHuman concepts. My name is Joel Palmius, and I am the community manager for MakeHuman. Over the years, the MakeHuman team has developed both the technological solutions as well as language for describing these. For a new user, these terms might be experienced as intimidating, as it is not always immediately obvious what the term describes. However, on a conceptual plane, the basic terminology should not necessarily be that difficult to understand. While the underlying technology and mathematics may be more than most casual users would be willing to swallow, the concepts should not be that complex. In this video, I'm going to explain the most important terms on a general plane without diving too deeply into the details. If you find yourself intrigued or otherwise curious, there is documentation and tutorials on the MakeHuman community homepage. While it is my belief that most MacHuman users should be able to follow this tutorial, it is also assumed that you already have at least a passing acquaintance with MacHuman. You should have opened it and played around with it a bit to get a feeling about its purpose and basic functionality. I will also open Blender and show some things in it. It should be possible to understand these demonstrations without ever having used Blender, but I will not be explaining Blender as such. But without further ado, Let's start with the object that is the core of MakeHuman, the base mesh. The base mesh is the generic humanoid mesh that MakeHuman operates on. It is the androgynous and neutral human that is the starting point for your modeling. When you drag a slider, it is the base mesh that you are modifying. When you add clothes, these are modified to fit the current state of the base mesh. When you add a skin, it is painted as a texture on the base mesh. All that is fine and such, but what is the base mesh? The technological answer is that the base mesh is a 3D object saved in a wavefront object format. It consists of 19,158 vertices and 18,486 faces. In its raw form, the file size is roughly 1.7 megabytes. In MakeHuman, you only see the actual body part of the base mesh. But the 3D object has many parts which are normally hidden, and which are used to help when for example fitting clothes or figuring out where a finger joint or an elbow is. To get a deeper understanding, let's take a closer look at the raw form of the base mesh. In Blender, we can simply import it into the project by going to File, Import and Wavefront Ob. The object as such can be found in the data directory when running from source. If you have downloaded a binary build, chances are that you only have a compiled version which cannot be opened in Blender. In that case, you can download the base.obj file from the source code repository on GitHub. Anyway, this doesn't look a whole lot like what we just saw in MacHuman. The reason is that we here have all the usually hidden geometry. So the body is covered in the parts of the mesh which are used when working with clothes, targets or rigs. We will talk more about that later in the video, but for now, let's take a look at how it looks when you have imported an untextured and unmodified character from MakeHuman. Here we can see something that looks more like what we see in MakeHuman. The reason is that the import has added a mask modifier for hiding the helper geometry and the joint cubes. Let's flip that and see what happens. Here we have instead hidden the body and only kept the helpers. We can see something that looks like clothing and cubes hanging in the air where the fingers would normally be. The layers that look like clothes is what we usually talk about when we say helpers on the forums. That is, they are geometry for helping when modeling or fitting clothes. The cubes that hang in the air are joint cubes. That is, they are cubes placed where for example a finger joint should be considered to be. These are used when deforming the body so that it can be calculated where it should bend. We'll talk more about this when we explain poses later. Now that we know what a base mesh is, we can discuss what happens when you modify it. If you have ever opened MakeHuman, you will have seen that body modifications are done by dragging a slider. What happens in the background 
is that the base mesh is modified in order to display the new shape. What exact modifications that happen are specified in files called target files. A target file lists a set of vertices along with instructions on how these should be moved. That is, in which direction and how far should it be moved if we apply the target fully. For example, imagine that you have the default base mesh. Then you have a target called nose tip longer. In this, the 10 or so vertices making out the tip of the nose would be listed, along with the instructions that it should be moved a centimeter or so further away from the body. When applying the target, MacHuman reads the current position of the vertices and shifts them the indicated distance. That is, they are shifted from the current position, rather than from the default position, since another target may have already moved them previously. Now, many sliders apply more than one target when moved. Specifically, the sliders on the macro modeling panel tend to apply a set of targets. A group of targets constituting a slider is called a modifier. A modifier may be, for example, head fat. This slider defaults to being in the middle. When dragged to the right, the head is shifted towards a very fat model. When dragged to the left, the head is shifted towards a very lean model. Here we have thus two different targets affecting the same slider depending on which direction it is dragged in. In one direction, the head fat increase target is applied. In the other direction, the head fat decrease target is applied. Equipped with this new knowledge, let's take a look at how a raw target may look. Targets are simple text files which reside in the MakeHuman data directory if you run from source. Again, if you are running a binary build, simply download the target from GitHub if you want to take a look at it. Here we can see a set of numbers separated by spaces. The first number of each line is the vertex number. The following three are how far the vertex should be shifted in the x, y and z directions. Now let's load this in Blender and see what happens. Here I have loaded a base mesh without helpers. I have also installed the Make Target plugin in Blender. By using this, I can load a raw target and apply it to the selected base mesh. Let's load the target file we just saw. And we can see that the head gets fat. Usage of the Make Target tool is outside the scope of this video, but this is basically how you create the targets in MakeHuman. You start with the base mesh, shift a few vertices, and save the difference between the new state and the base mesh as a target file. Having studied the base mesh and what modifies the base mesh, we can now move on to things attached to the base mesh. If you have ever used MakeHuman, you will have noticed that there are things one can equip the character with. Things such as hairstyles, clothes, eyebrows and so on. What may not be immediately apparent is that these are all the same thing in a technical sense. They are produced using the same pipeline and share the same file format. Thus, there is really no difference between a set of eyebrows and a set of jeans in this case. Both will consist of at least two files. First, a wavefront object file with the mesh. And second, a file describing how that file should be fitted on top of the base mesh. Additionally, you will normally also have files such as material description, textures and so on, but the bare minimum is the base mesh file and the mapping file. What might also be confusing is that the same thing is true for proxy meshes. Despite looking a lot like the base mesh, they are actually, in a technical sense, clothes. You can think of a proxy as a bodysuit covering the whole body. But let's take a look at how this looks behind the scenes. To get a known example, we can use the bundled female elegant suit. First, we can take a look at the mesh. It can simply be imported in Blender. Note that we here have only the raw mesh. Textures and materials are listed in the mapping file. Now, let's open the mapping file. These are files with the extension mhclone, which are normal text files and which can be opened in any text editor. Here we can see a license blurb on the first 20 or so lines. Then we see a UUID, which is an internal unique identifier for the piece of clothing. Next, we see a few tags, which may consist of any string, and which are used for filtering in MacHuman. Then, the formal name of the item, 
On the next line, we can see that it refers to the obby file that we previously imported in Blender. Then some other stuff, of which we will talk more about materials in a moment. Finally, there is a lot of numbers. I won't be going into detail on how these are constructed, but conceptually, it is a mapping table describing which vertex on the piece of clothing belongs to which vertex on the base mesh. Technically, the numbers describe weighted averages of several vertices, but for now, you can think of it as a simple mapping table. Now, we'll return to the material. As you saw in the image clove file, it referred to another file as a material descriptor. While strictly speaking not absolutely necessary, you will find that each mesh in MakeHuman will have at least one material belonging to it. This is also true for the base mesh, in which case we refer to the material as a skin. There is otherwise no difference between a skin and a material, except that they are placed in different directories. The material descriptor is a text file with the extension mhmat. It can contain a large set of different material settings, such as diffuse texture, normal map, and shininess. In many cases, there is only one material file for a mesh, but there is no practical limitation on how many materials there can be. A mesh will discover additional materials if there are extra mhmat files placed in the mesh's folder. In this case, the material referred to from the mhclo file will be the default, and the additional materials can be switched between in the user interface. But let's return to the female elegant suit. Here we can see that there are two different materials. The default one we saw previously, and a grey version I whipped out quickly for this video. These can be switched between by simply clicking them in the UI. The mhmat files are in the same directory as the mhclo file that we previously opened. Here we have opened the default material for female elegant dress. In the file we can see settings which sets the material's base color, specularity and so on. But specifically note the diffuse texture line. This is the image texture that gives the default material its colors. Toggling between this material file and the corresponding file for the grey version, we can see that it is the same, but with the diffuse texture reference varying. Now, I could theoretically show you the same thing, but with toggling between skin materials. However, as Google has a tendency to ban our videos for being too realistic, I will carefully avoid showing a character without any clothes. Suffice to say that in the same way that you can have different materials for a piece of clothing, you can have different materials for the base mesh and the proxy meshes. The mhmat files look exactly the same, but are placed in the skins directory rather than in the clothes directory. Moving on, the next topic is skeleton. First. Let's make clear that there are two different terms that we use interchangeably in MakeHuman, skeleton and rig. These are the same thing, and there is no difference in connotation. In the user interface, you will see it referred to as skeleton. On the forums and in the data directory, it will be referred to as rig. The skeleton is composed of a set of bones, which are connected with joints. When changing the character's pose, the bones are rotated in relation to each other. In MakeHuman, there is a default skeleton, which has more bones than rigs will normally have in other use cases. This in order to provide a more fine-grained control of the character's pose. Specifically, the default skeleton has a rather large number of facial bones. Looking in the user interface, we can find the skeletons on the Skeleton tab. Per default, it would look as if there is no skeleton. But in reality, the default skeleton is always there even when no skeleton has been selected. In the case of another skeleton, the other skeleton's bones will be mapped to the default skeleton. By selecting the skeletons, we can see the difference in bone count between the default skeleton, the CMU skeleton, and the game skeleton. The skeleton is defined in a file with the extension mhskel, and it is in a JSON format. Now, this is a rather complex file, which you would seldomly have any cause to edit by hand. However, you can see here that the bones are defined as well as their relation to each other. But the main reason that I wanted to show you this file is the joints section. While these numbers may look cryptic, they are the vertex numbers for the joint cubes that we saw in the beginning. This is important to know when, for example, making targets that shifts the position of an elbow. In order to work with the skeletons, the vertices of the joint cube has to be shifted too, so that the bone gets placed in the correct location. 
Having seen the skeleton, it is natural to see what can be done with the skeleton. The very reason for having a skeleton is to enable posing. A pose is a set of rotations for the bones in a skeleton. For example, if you have a left hand waving pose, you would have rotated the shoulder and elbow so the left hand is up in the air. One source of confusion here is that poses are always for the default skeleton. They are modeled on the default skeleton and modify the default skeleton. If another skeleton is chosen, then the pose is transposed from the default skeleton onto the selected skeleton. In McHuman, there are conceptually two different kinds of poses. One thing that is called a pose and one thing that is called expression. An expression is a posing of bones in the face. For example, an expression could be smile, in which case the bones controlling the corners of the mouth would be rotated. The reason for this is that you can have both a pose and an expression at the same time. For example, a character smiling while running. In this case, the pose and the expression are morphed together. But let's take a closer look at what we are talking about. In MacHuman, we can find a set of poses which have been bundled with the distribution. As a side note, there is also a large set of high quality poses in the user repos and they can be downloaded with the asset downloader. The definition of a pose is done via a BVH file. Here we can see the definition of the stand 4 pose. BVH files are normally used for animation, for example mocap, but in MacHuman's case we only use the first frame of the animation. Again, this is a file you would not normally edit by hand. Suffice to say that BVH is also a standard format and you can easily export to it from, for example, Blender. Taking a look at expressions, we can see that this looks a lot like the pose tab. The main difference is that we are posing facial bones rather than the rest of the bones. Also, there are several rather amusing expressions posted in the user repos too, if you are interested. Taking a look at the doubt01 expression, we can see that it here is mapped as a JSON file modifying pose units. This makes the file a lot more understandable. You would normally not edit this file by hand either, as there is a user interface inside MacHuman for creating new expressions. This concludes the tutorial. This has only been a quick overview and is by no means intended to provide a complete understanding of the concepts demonstrated. But hopefully, it will have given you enough so that you know what to look for and ask about. If you have any questions, you are welcome to ask them on the forums. Please do not ask for support in YouTube comments, as such comments might not be seen for a long time. But for now, thank you and happy modeling.